please don't crash. Hello and what is up everyone, welcome back to game 2 between Team Liquid and EG in the TI7 group stages. This is one of the last games of the day. We had a pretty hype first game with a all rat strat for Team Liquid. Worked out incredibly well for them, but let's see if they decide to chain it up here or are they going to just go for it again? Yep, they're doing it. Nature's Profit second pick for Team Liquid. They're going for it. And EG have the first two picks as well. Are they just, are just going to play it again? This is a rerun? Am I missing something here? I mean, this is definitely game two, as we already see game one here, marked with the uh, new HUD or whatever for the picking phase. By the way, this looks really sick. I'm super happy about this. There are some bugs, as you see, when the players actually pick their hero. Right now, it's fine, but when they pick the hero and if they swap, some weird things are happening. You see the doubles of the hero model. Uh, hopefully, that gets fixed before... Uh, the main event of TI actually happens. I mean, Valve is usually fast on that kind of thing. Anyway, um, we might just see a repeat. Uh, I think if I'm an Ichi here, I ban out Brood. I'm not playing against that hero. No, they're they're banning out Storm Spirit. And Liquid will ban Pugna. I didn't look at the bans from the last game that closely, so I'm not sure if these are the same bans. I do know that Liquid did ban out Pugna last game as well. So I'm pretty sure for Liquid the bands are the same, but for EG I'm not so sure. I wasn't paying that close attention to it. Ten seconds to go. And now the fourth band here will be for EG. Uh, again, if I'm EG here, I ban out Brood. Unless they are fine with the Brood as long as they have the ability to counter pick. Again, Liquid got the last pick Brood in the last game, which definitely caught them by surprise a little bit. They had some ways to deal with it, but... Um, they didn't have a hero that could match up uh, directly against Matamba Man's Brood. So they might just not go for the ban here. They might go for the Lycan ban, actually. So EG's idea of the last game was to ban the... Yeah, it will be a Lycan ban. And looking at Liquid's ban, it's the exact same ban as for the last game. It's fan banned up now. So EG changing up a little bit in their bands while Team Liquid keeping it the same. And again, will they third pick the Visage here? So Sumail Marana it seems, unless it is a support Marana or it could be Arteezy Marana as well. Uh, it seems like EG really like to keep the enemy team guessing with their draft here. Not really directly showing who is playing what, but uh, in recent history, Samael mostly has been the Marana player for EG. Now Liquid here. I, I feel like they can just go Visage again. That hero is super strong. Uh, I mean, Kuroki was feeding a lot in the last game, but it just didn't matter. He was like 1-5-1 one, and one at some point, but that was just space created, right? For his team. Again, Mind Control is going to take over this game if EG aren't careful. Um, I'm pretty sure this has to be Samuel Marana because I don't think you send Marana mid against an HS Prophet. Pretty sure he wins that matchup again. Uh, he wins any range versus range matchup just because of his chance. Um, if you don't have a stout shield, you just can't play against an HS Prophet. That's why I'm surprised they didn't actually send the Veno mid. I think Veno, of course, loses to Brute a lot harder than a Void does, but... Yeah, in that scenario, it's kind of a lose-lose. Right, instead of the Visage that time around, they go with a Shadow Shaman. Again, another pushing-oriented hero, so might just see Liquid go for a full-on push strat like they did in the last game. It's more so a rat strategy with Broodmother, Nature's Prophet, Lycan. Uh, that's how they ended up winning the game, just pushing in two waves at once, and EG didn't have enough heroes to deal with all the pressure. So here, I see them picking crits here once again. Honestly, I don't think Shadow Shaman would be that bad this game. They had a pretty, yeah, or not Shadow Shaman, Winter Wyvern, I mean. Shadow Shaman's picked up by Liquid. I don't know how I confused those two. It was kind of late for me. It's only 10 p.m., but I did wake up. I didn't actually even wake up that early. I don't know why I'm that tired, but who knows. Been watching Dota all day. Strain you a little bit. 
haven't been casting for that much. I've casted four games today um, that I didn't record, but for these two, it's a pretty hype game. I want to get those YouTube views. So, hope you guys, you're checking this one out. For Liquid here, they don't have access to the Lycan anymore. They don't have the overall last pick either. So, it doesn't seem EG or that worried about the Broodmother. And without the Lycan to buff up, of course, it's not going to be as strong. Probably one of the reasons behind the fact that they will pick the Shadow Shaman here instead of the Visage. Uh, they won't have the how to buff up the familiar, so they just rather have the Shadow Shaman. Drop those mass separate wars down. Gives you a little bit of extra disable as well. Stronger in laying stage too. So what can liquid go for here? Again. Pretty sure the Marana will be mid, so they can just pick up a hero here for Miracle to match up against some male. And they're gonna go with Faces Void. So that will be a Metubble Man hero, I think, right? And that will give them the team fight. Also, Deny picks the Faces Void for EG if that's what they're gonna go for. They also could have just banned it out as a last ban. But EG did pick the Void last game. It does fit this game as well. Again, they have the heroes to combo with the Chrono, with the Arrow, as well as the Earth Splitter. Now they will ban out uh, Miracles Invoker as the last ban. Pretty good combination uh, that they have to go up with the Invoker. Got the Chrono Sphere, Shackles from the Shadow Shaman. Will allow them to set up some easy Sun Strikes. DP ban will be the last ban for Team Liquid. Uh, I believe. Who ran? I just watched a game with uh, Death Prophet. Oh, yeah, it was OG who just ran a Death Prophet. And, alright, Silencer, last pick for Team Liquid. I think that hero is pretty good. Uh, good counter to the heroes on EG in terms of being able to pop out the silence to prevent any counterplay uh, when the Chrono comes out. And. That's going to mean the Winter River and the Elder Titan. They will have to go for some method to get rid of the silence, but it's just simply not possible um, that early on in the game. So, Team Liquid will just get f some free team fights as long as they get a good initiation. It's going to be no Cold Embrace or Echo Stomp coming up from the Elder Titan to turn around the fight. So, that will be a mid silencer. And EG will pick up a Lone Druid. So that will be a safe lane Lone Druid for RTZ. Murano will take, or will be taken by some male mid. And how does Lone Druid fare in this game? Alright, he does match up against Nature's Prophet okay. So he'll be able to fight back with his own summoned unit. Uh, will be some tree ant on bear action in that uh, top lane. As for Matum Man, he will be taking up the Faces Void. GH will be on the Earthshaker once again. He had a really good showing in the last game. And Samael not picking the Marana yet, but I'm pretty sure it will, it will be Samael Marana. I don't see him play Batrider at all. And Universe will be taking the Batrider off lane against the Void. I do think Void handles that matchup okay. As for the mid matchup, I think Silencer actually wins that against a Murano, especially with some help from GH or Kuroki. So... I feel like this game can go either way though. Uh, Liquid had a really hard draft to deal with the last game. Uh, EG didn't allow them to get it again. And EG going with a really similar strat that they had in the last game. Changed up their uh, mid and carry a little bit, but kept their offlane and supports the same. And it's definitely showed the lineup strength being able to survive against Liquid's draft for so long. I thought they would just get run over, but they were able to hang in there for a long time. I didn't do the predictions last game. Let's do it this game. This uh, I think EG will actually win this one. So I'm going to say this with the Lone Druid. They'll push. Roshan kills two. Tower Destruction. Uh, I think eight, five to eight. Safe. And highest total number of magic damage or pure damage. Hmm. 
It's a hard one. Let's say Samail. Yeah, Samail owns this game. I don't actually know though, I'm just guessing. I'm a EG fan, so I really want them to win this game. Mind control, starting with the same build that he did in the last game. He's gonna do the same thing. However, TZ will have a bear to fight back this time around. Like the Venomancer that he had in the last game. And Mind Control again, I just click his tree and straight onto the bear. TZ did get one last hit, but his bear actually took a lot of harasses. It doesn't have a stout shield. And it's gonna continue to take a lot of harass here from Mind Control. He's hard to catch as well. GH making the same movement up here as well with the Fissure. And once again, EG will have to give up their safe lane boundary and to just mind control and GH in the mid lane. They do have two wards here. I believe one of them was spotted, so expect to see a D ward uh, from either side. I think EG spotted the ward. No, actually, this ward was placed first, so. Um, Liquid should have seen EG's ward, but no, I mean, he put it from smoke as well, so neither ward was spotted. So I definitely saw Crit walk by here. This ward was placed first. Yeah, he was still smoked, I believe. Crit actually starting mid here, just to help out to some mail. We'll pop the Arctic Burn there onto Miracle. Does burn a decent amount. Oh, never mind. I was wrong about that. Yeah, so Liquid did spot out the ward. He's gonna use the Sentry to get the Super Tango, but. As a result, uh, Samael also going to get the D ward as well. Does he get the last hit? Yeah, he will. So that was a trade of wards there. The thing is, the only way that they're going to see that ward being placed is if they had the ward themselves. So this is a pretty easy D ward for a crit there. And he's going to head around. Arctic burn on 10 second cooldown about. And maybe he's looking for a kill here onto Miracle, but he will salve up by then. But crit looking to go in. Cancel the south, he will. He doesn't have the Arctic Burn yet, he's gonna eat the last word and a lot of harass as well from the Glaives. Zai doing the same thing he did in the last game, just putting pressure on the bottom lane, but it's a lot harder to pressure a Void than a Lycan. And same thing with the Shadow Shaman, he hits pretty hard, and Zai doesn't have a stout shield. We'll stop Shaman from pulling potentially. Oh no, Kuroki should get the pull off. GH will rotate in now. Went for the no HP regen build, just went for the clarities and boots just so he can walk around and pop fissure casually to help his lanes out. Looking to contest the rune here with crit already positioned, but I think GH, nope, the rune doesn't spawn and he may be in a little bit of trouble. No, the Arctic Burn does expire. GH should be able to run away with the boots. Uh, Elder Titan is faster with the spirit move speed, but will expire and they should run about the same speed yeah it's only about five move speed faster we're just gonna let this top lane once again be a complete 1v1 against nature's prophet really strong in lane against the winter waven they don't even want to send the winter waven up there at all just want to have crit help the other lanes he doesn't really do anything in the top lane if anything he's gonna allow my control to harass him maybe even set up some kills with gh rotating in so just gonna have crit walk around help out the other lanes Maybe even create some stacks. Doesn't seem like there's any stacks quite yet. In the bottom lane though. Matone man doing a lot of damage to Zion. He will go down first blood. We'll go to GH. Well played there. Crit still sitting in the mid lane. Did once again use the arc to burn there onto Miracle. Let's open the last hit to nice and see how things are going. As you see, Lone Druid able to match up a lot better against the Nature's Prophet as he's doubling up my control CS right now. As for the mid lane, it is slightly in the favor of Miracle, but just slight. Should be a fairly even mid matchup unless some ganks start coming in. And Marana not that easy to gank with the Air Shaker at this point. They'll have to either force her to use the leap. And then try to fissure because otherwise she'll just be able to leap over the fissure. But in the bottom lane, we're gonna see another kill here. GH will get a second kill onto Zai. And once you're wearing TP's in, they don't have any way to cancel the TP. So shout out Shaman Kuroki will just be able to TP himself back to base and get to safety. And Zai was dominating the last game, but this game he's just dying. 
the Shadow Shaman being a lot stronger support as well as Void being a lot stronger safe laner be able to just punish this aggressive dual lane from EG that much more. However, in this game, Mind Control is having a lot harder time than he did in the first game. But Gank coming in from Zai in the mid lane and with the haste rune, so Mail will be able to get that kill there onto Miracle. Big kill will allow him to pull forward in this mid lane. And this is kind of similar scenario from what happened in the first game, but uh, with a bit of a roll, roll reversal. The last game, Mind Control completely dominated his lane and uh, uh, Metubo Man dominated his lane mid, but in this game, Samael doing really well mid and in the safe lane, Arteezy doing really well while in the bottom lane, Universe is going to feed another kill. So one lane going well for Liquid while they're actually missing out on the other two lanes as another gank coming in from crit arrow will hit onto miracle but maybe Samael went too deep for this one he's gonna get hit by the last word they turn around and get the kill but they still lose the silencer as i comes in finishes off the kill there onto croaky as well crit actually getting the kill there and now gh has arrived he's looking for maybe a kill on somebody it's really hard he doesn't have the aftershock yet so he's just gonna toss the casual fissure and chill out he actually is locking crit in place here he can't walk around doesn't have the arctic burn he walks up Hits him with another enchant totem attack, but just for some casual harass. It only cost him 20 mana. So, oh no, he got his clarity cancelled immediately from Zai. Now they know that they have a ward in the mid lane somewhere. Uh, I don't know if they know the exact location. It's this place far on the right side here. Top lane, mind control, battling up against Arteezy. Again, RTZ about doubling up his CS at this point. This is a similar scenario in the last game, but the role reversal. Lone Druid able to lane a lot better than a Nature's Prophet, and he's a whole two levels ahead actually. And Kuroki actually will rotate in here. They're looking for a turnaround as RTZ tried to dive deep under the tower. Zai is here with the turnaround Echo Stomp, and that will stop them from going aggressive onto RTZ. And they will actually have to probably back off, but Mind Control wants to get a couple. Last hits under tower before he TP's back to base to regen. And Kuroki will have to walk all the way back. And this is leaving Matoma Man to do his thing in the bottom lane. He's getting pretty decent farm, but not as good as Arteezy. Alright, crit gets the Arctic Burn. They're onto GH near the mid lane. They didn't actually get the D ward uh, quite yet. Definitely know that there's a ward in mid, but uh, Kuroki was busy going top and doesn't have money for the sentries either as for miracle did go for the double null talisman on the silencer I wonder if he's actually gonna just build that into a uh, veil or just, just casual double null talisman just to boost up his damage he's going for the max last ward build which is pretty good this game using him that vision and preventing these heroes from comboing their abilities is pretty important, especially against like Winter Wyvern and Elder Titan even. And you can also just pop it onto Samael for pretty heavy harass, but Samael doesn't care actually. He leaps forward, the arrow will miss, but oh no! Miscalculated the amount of damage he had left, cancelled his uh, auto attack. Thought he had enough for the kill, I think. Either that or he just wanted to back out. Didn't matter though. TP rotations come in from the rest of Liquid. They will get the turnaround kill there. That's another plus two in for Miracle. But he'll still have to walk back to base as he got taken out really low. Universe popping the Firefly. It was just to farm the wave and scare Matoma Man a little bit there. But Matoma actually was just turning around. He doesn't care. He did go for the max time lock. And now the TP rotation coming in from Nature's Prophet. They're actually going to reconsider that as the lasso comes out. Comboed into Samael's arrow. That's going to be another kill for Samael. His two deaths were as a result of uh, some over-aggressive play. But I don't think they'll worry too much about that as RTZ is still farming just fine. And what build is he actually going to go for? He went for the Aquila. Has his maxed out bear now. What happened? What? No. Nature's Prophet? What was he doing there? Alright, that's weird. I wasn't sure what was happening. Top tower is, under siege. is he trying to reward us? I don't even know. Oh, he was, for some reason, 
at this bottom rune, when the rune is not even spawning, it's 9 minutes in the game, ends up going down for another kill to Samael. And Samael will be going for the right click Mirana build. We don't see too much of the Agnum Mirana anymore. And as a result, he has his Dragonlance queued up. Now for Universe, he's about halfway there to his Blink Dagger. It's going to be a big pickup for EG. We saw them get some nice pickoffs with it in the last game onto critical targets and should be able to do it this game as well. But in the mid lane, Miracle getting dove again. He'll pop the Global Silence that will force EG to back off. But they should be able to get out without losing anybody. But as I say that, GH comes in with a nice Fisher block onto crit. And it will allow him to get one pickup kill. And another plus two in for Miracle. He's up to plus six now. They also shrine up at the same time for efficiency. And GH has done a lot of work this game. Three, zero, and three. Top lane will fall to Arteezy. Again, I'm not so sure what build he's going. I think he's actually going for the Lone Druid ranged build. We don't see that often anymore since the nerfs. The lasso will be used onto Kuroki. He will go down. Not that big of a deal. But now Arteezy, after taking the top tower, will immediately TP to the bottom shrine. They're looking to pressure this bottom tower as well as five. They're going to smoke up two. And smoke will actually head towards. Miracle while the rest of the heroes push out bottom crit sitting behind Arteezy as well as Universe sitting behind him as well And it's going to be a bit of a two-pronged attack. They get the stomp there onto Miracle, but unfortunately Samael was silent So he couldn't combo it into the arrow well, on the bottom lane Matama man forcing EG back a little bit and GH gets spot in the tree now he's in a lot of trouble, gets the Fissure out, will protect him for a little bit, but Universe catching up, he just needs one auto attack, gets the Sticky Napalm onto GH, but no, he has the Magic Stick, will keep him alive for a little bit longer, will not save him however, as he gets chased down, Zai will finish up the kill. Now with the 10 minute Catapult, they're going to be able to do a lot of pressure onto this bottom tower, they're going to actually kill it, and they could look towards some pressure onto the tier 2 as well, Mind Control is doing the same top though. He's trying to take this tier 1 as a trade, but he is a solo unit up here as EG have all of their heroes bottom except for some male. And I guess Crit now, who did TP up top to try to slow down this push. He's to watch out though. GH is here, comes in with Echo, comboed into the totem. Crit will be able to stall for a little bit with the Winter's Curse, even has the magic stick. Oh! Gets a nice Winter's Curse off. And GH should be able to still get the kill though. Mind Control even using a short range TP there to get that kill while on the bottom lane what happened or in the mid lane actually Metal Man getting the Chronosphere off will get a kill there onto Universe Miracle however will be the casualty in return they also lose Kuroki there while at the same time Arteezy rotated all the way from the bottom lane to mid wants to pressure this tier 1 uh, tier 2 bottom already taking a lot of damage surprised he didn't uh, try to hit this tier 2 down here I guess he was a bit afraid of uh Getting gone on as they do have the global TP on mind control, but you know, the echo slam was down. This just wasn't comfortable again. He is going for the range build, he went for the plus 175 attack range at level 10, and now he's building into a maelstrom. So, Mel changed up his build here a little bit instead of going for the dragon lance, he decided for a Yasha, give him some extra move speed, help him farm a little bit faster as well. Miracle is going for the Midas on the Silencer. I do think that Liquid still have the late game here. EG, actually it will be close. I don't think Lone Druid with the nerfs, I haven't seen him played in a long time, so I don't, I'm not sure how he match up against these heroes anymore. But I feel like he's still not that strong. Uh, ideally you want to just play tempo base with this hero still. But still the potential out there. What did they change his level 20 talent with? Instead of respawn timer, yeah they only his level 20 talent only buffs up his bear, so he didn't have the ridiculous respawn timer anymore. So he's a lot weaker in general. Doesn't have that ridiculous super short respawn timer in the late game anymore. But my control and a lot of trouble here. Top universe catches him with the lasso, and he will go down. Well played there from universe and crit. And that pickoff will allow Universe to finish up his Blink Dagger. They get the 
stomp onto Miracle in the mid lane. Arrow will not connect onto him as Kuroki, as a support, will tank the arrow for his carry. Protecting his 9k play there, protect the President Miracle. And Miracle will survive as a result, and I'm pretty sure they're okay with that. Could have gone a lot worse if they lost Miracle there, but he will be able to use his Midas and salve up. GH is farming the jungle a little bit here. He wants to get towards this Blink Dagger. He's real close to it. And they see Universe here in the top lane. They want to try to get a kill into him, but the EG Ward will spot out the rotation, and Universe should get out of this just fine. Bottom lane though, RTZ putting some pressure down here in this tier 2. It's already fallen pretty low to the catapult that was pushed all the way in at 10 minutes. But the tumble man going for a Lincoln Sphere, so going for the TI6 Shadow build. Uh, pretty good against the Lasso. They're actually going to go forward on this Chronosphere onto Universe. They combo into the Hex. They do have enough damage. Universe will fall. Set up by this Liquid Ward, however. It will come out of trade as RTZ takes the bottom tower. Now GH, really close to his blink dagger now. Just needs like about one more wave of farm to get it. It's actually going to TP onto the shrine, finds some mail. Doesn't have enough mana for the full combo, Echo Slam and Fissure. He'll pop the shrine, he's tanking a lot of damage here. Now Global Science will come out. There's the Echo Slam. They will finish off some mail. Crit is in a lot of trouble as well. Again. They don't have the saving abilities of the Winter Wyvern once the Global comes out, and now I think Crit just gonna die. He does have his abilities to use, but he eats that damage in the last word. Pops the Winter's Curse, doesn't matter, still goes down to GH, gets a nice Fissure here as well. Onto two, keeps his Nature's Prophet alive for a little bit longer, but the fire damage from Universe is too much. They chase into him, and he'll just get a double kill there. This whole time, Metal Man didn't really join that fight. He got that kill onto Universe and just proceeded to farm EG's jungle while RTZ. Same thing, except he's pushing out the top wave. Did push out bottom, now he's pushing out top. GH, however, did complete his blink dagger after the engagement, plus some. So, he's pretty happy right now. He's made a lot of plays on this support Earthshaker. Samael, not having the best game. He's died three times now. Has a lot of kills. Uh, I believe he's probably the most kills on his team at this point. Yeah, but definitely playing pretty aggressively. But I think they're going to rely on RTZ to just carry the game, and they're okay with Samael going aggressive and getting kills, but then dying. Mind control going for the same item build as the last game, starting with the Orchid. It's a classic item build onto Nature's Prophet, and something we don't see too often anymore. Is this. Orchid ganking Nature's Prophet, but Mind Control making it work last game, and he's not having the greatest game in this game, but I mean, has some kills there. Definitely set up some nice ganks for his team. Arteezy pushing in onto the mid lane. They do have crit smoked up behind, as well as Universe looking to maybe force a rotation from Liquid to defend the tower and then get the lasso for a kill, and maybe that. They can head into Roshan or go for the tier 2, but no one from Liquid will take the bait. Deep Ward here placed by EG, giving some pretty good vision on Liquid's side of the map. I think Liquid's game plan right now is to just get Matumba Man farmed up and uh, look to take fights with Chronosphere. Again, he still doesn't have his Lincoln Sphere, so he has to be careful actually. If he gets lasted up, I do think they do have enough damage to take him out, especially with the Natural Order. It's only level 1 right now, but... They get more points up on that, and he'll lose all of his armor and magic resistance. And with that, they just combo the lasso into arrow, and RTZ will dish out the DPS, or um, they can just dish out the damage with the Marana as well, the Star Storm. Pretty heavy burst there for the Void to deal with. The bottom lane, some TPs were forced from EG to defend. Mind Control did get himself out without a problem. And now Ichi going for a smoke. They did de-ward beforehand, so uh, Ichi don't see this coming. Crit drawing to push out the bottom lane. And oh, really nice scan from EG. So they did see the smoke coming. The scan will hit them right on the mark and Liquid will be spotted out. 
they're still going to be in position to pressure this tier 2 top however so even if the smoke doesn't work out at least they're going to be able to cover mind controls push towards the tier 2 and they're going to do a lot of damage to it as well and EG are not in a position set up to defend this so uh, even though the smoke won't get any kills oh maybe they get a bear kill as Arteezy sends his bear up here just to scout and it's going to run into 4 heroes the bear will end up going down there to the nature's profit actually that's 300 gold for him and they're going to drop the server wards in this top tier 2 just to make sure they secure the tower. Ichi popped the Moonlight Shadow, and Liquid actually just gonna get the heck out of there. Tower will fall. They're focusing the Serpent ones on the tower. Smell's doing his best to focus the wards down. Can they get the deny? They do not. Kroki will get the kill there. And Mind Control TP straight to the bottom lane to push it out. Arteezy encircling the map. I'm not sure what that is, but he had to go for the Dragon Lance now, so he's pretty long range on the Lone Druid. Also has the plus 50 damage talent, so he's hitting fairly hard, but he hasn't joined a team fight at all. He's just mostly been pushing out lanes and farming. Well, I'm not sure what the camera control there. Samael getting threatened by Mind Control's TP. GH still fairly farmed on this it's Earthshaker. It hasn't really had item progression because he hasn't found a fight since he picked up his Blink Dagger. But he's level 10. One for the 10 strength. This hero gets very tanky just with his talents. Has a 10 strength talent, has pretty good uh, strength gain as well, and has a 50 damage talent, level 15. That's a pretty big power spike for the hero. Again, Matoma Man isn't farming that well. I should open the net worth right now instead of the last hits. They don't really mean anything. So, you see, since all Arteezy has been doing, he will be at the top of the net worth. The top man significantly far behind. He still didn't have the Lincoln Sphere yet, and oh, he does get lassoed up, but GH is here with the counter initiation. They come in with the Echo, the Chrono as well, hits onto two. GH will go down, but they will take two in return. Winter's Curse gets popped onto the top man, will not stop him though, as he's gonna get out. Mind Control comes in, takes too much damage from Arteezy, he will go down. Miracle is here, maybe looking to turn around. What's the Courier doing there? The Courier will die, and the Lincoln Sphere recipe will die with it. So Mail gets a double kill as he takes out the Shadow Shaman in the back line there. And it will be a 3 for 3 trade. Pretty much every ultimate expended there as well. But I don't know what the courier was doing. It was trying to deliver Matum Man's item, Miss Micro or something, but it means that he's not gonna have his Lincoln Sphere for another two minutes. Which is a big deal. Is it's gonna make it a lot harder for Universe to find those initiations until he gets his force stat, but he's really close to his force, so. Uh, also, he does have to use the force to pop the Lincoln, so he won't be able to force out. Something to note as well. But with the ultimates used from EG, they just go straight mid and take the tier 1 casually with the chance and mind control. I guess Mind Control was summoned, the one who summoned the Trian, so it was only just Mind Control. But another fight will break out here. Nature's Prophet Ultimate hits onto EG. They use the Moonlight Shadow. They need to escape, but Arteezy's range is too much. GH comes in to try to stall for his team, but doesn't manage to save Mind Control or Shadow Shaman. Fortunately for GH, he does get himself out without dying. And with that, EG heading straight into the Rosh Pit. They don't have the Chronosphere, they don't have the Echo Slam. Chronosphere is still cooling down for 20 seconds, and I believe this will be an EG Roshan. Arteezy actually going for the Hurricane Pike, fully completed. That will help him against the Fissure. Uh, in general, just to be more mobile in these fights, making sure he doesn't get locked down. Can't even use it aggressively as well. Again, EG has just made this game a farm game. Arteezy had a lot of space created for him, and he's taken it. And as a result, he's the top net worth in the game, and he's not even going to take the Aegis. He is pretty hard to kill, as he's playing at a really long range in these fights. As you saw there, mid, and Samael, who does want to like leap in to get the double Star Storm off, will be the one taking the Aegis instead. And now he does have the completed Manta style, and that will help him deal with the Global Silence. As for the rest of EG, do they have any other answers to the global yet? Nope, they do not. Zai actually, instead of going for Yules, will favor a Sanj building into a Halberd. 
that will help against the Silencer Void and even Nature's Prophet. Primarily right clicking cores on the side of Liquid. As for Kuroki, how is he doing on this 5 position Shadow Shaman? Low <laughs> Lowest net worth in the game, but he's not that far behind crit, only about 100 behind. And he's queued up a Agonims, but we'll see if he ever actually gets to that point. And Miracle, he's doing okay in terms of int, has 16 stolen int. Um, hasn't had the greatest game in the world, but not a bad game either. Pretty average so far. As for TZ, he has yet to die yet, and he's still farming up. Going to have a Mjolnir very soon. Mind Control not having a good game this game like he did last game from the laning stage to the mid game. He's died a lot compared to game one. And right now I think Liquid just looking to play it slow. They don't want to fight into this Aegis onto Samael, but Samael is positioned very aggressively and they find a nice two-man fissure onto Crit and Samael. The Hex comes out, Global Science comes out as well. GH will go down. No, he gets the Echo Slam off before dying. He will end up going down still, but they take out Samael's Aegis. They take out Crit before he can cast any abilities as well. Croaky will now go down. That's a double kill for Arteezy, but it doesn't matter. Arteezy actually just killing everyone. Samael was just a bait. They did use the Cronus Crit for that one as well, and... All right, now I feel like Ichi's just gonna clean up. That's a five man wipe, double kill with that Earth Splitter. Impressive Earth Splitter from Zai there, and they're just gonna clean up the Serpent Wars as well. There's the Shadow Shaman counter. They have pretty long range hitting heroes. They're gonna push into this tier two. Sorry with the camera control in the team fight, guys. Uh, I don't have the zoom out ability because uh, it's not what I play with. And could turn it on right now, but it's whatever, man. I feel like you guys want to see the rest of this game instead of seeing me going through the menu. Doing my best to cover the team fight there. Did catch most of it. Didn't catch the chrono on the side. But that's tier 3 down as well. Full 5 man wipe tier 3 down. They're gonna gladly take that trade for the Aegis. And the only one who died there was Crit. Again, Arteezy, just a monster in that uh, in these fights. Liquid, not a stranger to this ranged Lone Druid, as they ran this a lot when it was in meta uh, onto Matumba Man. But it's catching them a little bit by surprise here, as not the build that's very common anymore for this hero. Uh, he's kind of went back to building Midas and Radiance, but I think in this game, it's a perfect fit, as they don't have a hero that really goes in that deep other than the Earthshaker and the Void, but again, they want to chrono these other heroes like the Winter Waverin and the Elder Titan, otherwise they'll be able to get their defensive abilities off. I guess they do have the Global Silence, but Arteezy just has so much space created for his team in front of him that he can just play really far back and just dish out his damage from a range. Crit potentially in trouble here. Moonlight Shadow comes out, and alright, RTZ waiting in the wings, camping his support. Gonna turn that around, that's a mega kill streak. While on the back line here, they get the lasso onto GH. Global Silence comes out to try to protect his Earthshaker, but he gets yulzed up in the air. Marana did not get the air to combo up. GH actually able to survive for a little bit longer, but RTZ has arrived, dishing out the damage like a sniper with a machine gun, and he's Lone Druid. We... This is a meme build, and we're seeing the return of the meme here. And again, he doesn't have a talent that synergizes that well anymore at level 20. Did go for the magic resistance for his bear. So they do have a decent amount of magic damage on Liquid. I guess it's okay, because the armor won't help that much against the silencer. We're going to take a tier 2 top, head straight into this shrine as well. And it's going to be an easy shine for EG, and I'm right about EG winning this game. I'm not right about the barracks, though. I don't think they're going to take the barracks in the next two minutes. They did take a tier three. So this is looking to be another 1-1 one, one for EG. They've tied up against every single team they played against so far. TNC, IGV, and now Liquid as well, it seems. But... Liquid are not entirely out of it. Um, they do still have a really good high ground holding lineup with the Earthshaker and Void. So EG will have to 
look for a creative way to break the high ground here. They have to find a nice fight outside the base, uh, create some chaos, maybe uh, when Roshan spawns. But right now, they're actually sitting as five in their base, and we'll smoke up now. Huh, let's see if the smoke actually pays off. They're drawing a line straight down mid, or at least crit is, and they're looking to catch liquid unexpectedly on their high ground. See if this actually works out. Uh, creep wave needs to be pushed out a little bit, otherwise they won't have a creep wave to push in with. So I actually will reveal himself here, and the pings do come out for miracle. He noticed it, and they do know that EG are smoked up now, and I think as a result, EG just kind of back off. It's a bit of a hopeful smoke there. Crit TPing to the bottom lane to defend against a split push from mind control. And he still has a lot of creeps to clear here. Well, two Spencer Flash should take out most of them. So smoke won't work out for EG. Again, it was pretty hopeful. Um, RTZ going for the BKB, and that will help protect him in these team fights against the Earthshaker. But now Liquid going for a smoke of their own, and they will find universe but really fast on the blink out there and they're gonna pop the moonlight shadow as well maybe they're looking for a re-engage here onto liquid and oh, oh miracle he will get his tp cancelled he wanted to tp out but now they can combo this into the arrow nope they just use the savage roar from the lone druid Murano will come in the arrow will hit there and that's gonna be a kill onto miracle now they can head and push down this bottom lane, take this shrine as well as D Ward as they did pick up the gem there onto Universe. Uh, as I actually did buy it, but Universe will be the holder of the gem. RTZ. Not wasting time though. Actually, they're not even bothering with the shrine. They're pushing straight into mid lane. They're looking to try to maybe take a range dax or maybe even a melee if the fight breaks out and they take a fight 4v5, but no, they just push the wave in. They're looking towards Roshan. It will be spawning in 30 seconds. In the meantime, Samael will be the one dealing with the shrine. And he's super farm now on Marana. Right up there with the net worth uh, on our TZ. Only about a couple hundred gold behind. 200 gold behind. 100 gold behind us. He farms the Ancients. And he's, he has a completed Mjolnir. And he's hitting hard and fast on this Marana right now does have a plus 50 damage of his own at level 20. Metal Man will complete his second item now with the Diffusal Blade. Did buy out for going buyback. While the bottom lane goes down. You know, that's top lane. Goes down to some split pushing from mind control. The catapult finishes off the tower. Or no, actually, he gets the kill there with his uh, Triance, it seems. Well, Roshan will be the next objective for both these teams. Uh, I mean, Liquid don't really have the Rosh taking lineup, but they do have to stop EG from taking it. They can't afford to fight against an Aegis and Cheese. The gem will be purchased up by Kuroki. They need to regain some vision control on the map as EG has completely dewarded everything with their gem on Universe. And now they're going to go for a smoke play this daytime, so it's a high chance of them finding a good catch onto somebody. And they're gonna use the bear as maybe bait. And they do lose the bear. Here comes the lasso straight onto Miracle. They're gonna combo into the Earth Splitter. Earth Splitter actually doesn't hit onto Miracle. He four staffs away. RTZ pops his BKB. He's manning up, but I mean he's in a no man zone. The rest of his team isn't here. The Chrono hits on the sideline there, but doesn't manage to kill anybody. Cold Embrace saving crit. RTZ didn't manage to kill anyone with his BKB usage, but it will be a one fight technically for EG. Ultimates were used except for the Echo Slam, but they get the kill there onto Kuroki. They force out the Serpent Wards, they farm the Wards, and they're just gonna take Roshan. RTZ going for a butterfly. I'm assuming Samael will take the Aegis again. RTZ will take the cheese. Oh no, this time around. It's gonna be the opposite. RTZ will take the Aegis and Samael will take the cheese. Yes, there wasn't a cheese last time around, but Samael did take the Aegis. Mind control. Again. Split pushing to the best of his ability, but he can't go out too far as Universe will pick him off. 
and Universe will even go for boost travel as his next item to deal with this but pushing nature's profit. The rest of EG looking to go straight down mid. They want to claim this Rax, unfortunately they won't claim it early enough to satisfy my prediction but pretty sure they can take the Rax here with the Aegis and Cheese. I don't see how they defend without the Chronosphere, it's still on cooldown for another 40 seconds. Uh, they do have the ability to spam out the wave though and uh, really smart play here from Arteezy, cutting the wave top to make sure that there's no split pushing shenanigans coming out from my control. Um, able to push out the top wave too hard and yeah this is the last creep wave he has there's only one range creep left and this is all the rest is tree ants TZ being kept back from the high ground they're gonna try to spam out the waves to the best of the ability they're even gonna pop the Lincoln Sphere onto Kroki to make sure he doesn't get lassoed really smart play there from Liquid but now RTZ just hitting onto the high ground from the low ground doesn't care Smell even gonna pop the leap to give him some extra attack speed. The rocks down to 50 HP. Needs one more auto attack. All right, Bear, what are you doing? That was his. Oh no, he does have the resummon in two seconds. It's just another 300 gold. They're gonna go into the chrono now. They managed to stall long enough for the chrono sphere to be back up, and they get Marana. And she doesn't have the Aegis, so she will go down. Didn't have an opportunity to cast the cheese, and again with no way to remove the global silence on the Winter Wave, and he couldn't cast the cold embrace. And now Crit in a lot of trouble here as oh he will go down. There's another plus two int for Miracle, and high ground will be held somehow from Liquid. Their melee racks was down to 50 HP, but they had the fort and the back uh, backdoor nice. protection kicked in, I believe, for a second there. They just went in straight with the chrono onto the Marana and didn't waste any time. Now they're going to turn it around and push in mid. There's no buyback onto Samael, or he's still holding onto the Aegis. And GH has. Alright. Is that the enemy gem? No. That's their gem that they purchased. GH is holding onto it. And he's going for the Shadow Blade. This will be a tier 2 taken for Liquid. They can't really go high ground as Marana and Winter Raven are respawning. Mind Control. Back to Split pushing the bottom lane. He is going for the Shiva's Guard. That will help slow the attack speed of both the Marana and the Lone Druid. Pretty big pickup for him there. Gives him some extra armor as well. And EG. Probably looking to make a play now that the Chronosphere is on cooldown, but it's only on cooldown for 20 seconds and Void has a Arcane Rune, but I don't think it's going to last long enough for him to use Chrono. Maybe it will, who knows. Uh, Man or Mind Control doing a good job of pushing out the bottom lane, so EG are still on a timer, they don't have forever uh, if they want to defend this tier 2 bot, but I mean, if they take the Rax mid, I think it's a fair trade, to, uh, giving up a uh, tier 2 to take Rax. But oh, GH goes in with the Echo, but EG just gonna get out. Echo doesn't really hit onto anybody. Echo Stomp hits directly onto Nature's Prophet as soon as he TPs in. They will get the mid racks. There's no fourth this time around, and they're gonna just back off. Samail. What is his itemization looking like right now? He did go for a Hurricane Pike of his own here. And. What will his last items be? Pretty sure he's gonna get MKB maybe. So he can attack onto the high ground from the low ground without missing. Pretty good. Uh, maybe Butterfly as well, but then they'll have two Butterflies. Yeah, it will be Butterfly. I guess there's no one on Liquid that will build the MKB, so it's not a bad pickup. Silencer went for a Lincoln Sphere of his own to deal with this Batrider, making sure that it doesn't get lassoed. Illusion. Mind control up to his usual split pushing shenanigans. He does have the completed Shiva's Guard now. He's actually really farmed. He's actually the most farmed hero on Liquid because he's the only one being able to push out these waves here, having this global TP. And again. EGR one racks up, but this game is not over by far. I do think that Liquid do have the late game. They have an infinite scaling on the silencer, first of all, and you never count out a void. Um, in these late game scenarios, he gets some good chronos off, and they definitely can turn this game back around. However, RTD is a major problem. He actually didn't go for the butterfly. He went for the Scotty instead. 
and his attack speed, his amount of HP that he has is pretty ridiculous as well. He's a beast right now in the Lone Druid. Level 25 talent did go for the Savage Roar cooldown reduction. So it's a 10 second cooldown now on this ability. Mind control. Still had it in terms of the split pushing. It's just sneaking in and out of the lane. As soon as anyone shows up, he makes sure he hides himself. But then as soon as they leave, he's back at it. Crit. He's trying to build towards the Lotus Orb. That would be a big pickup for him. He runs into a whole army of tree ants here. We'll shoot a splinter blast and clear some of them. While Zai looking to push into this bottom lane. He does have the Halberd complete. Going for a BKB. So he's going for the mana build here on the other Titan. Mr. Universe still has not purchased an item yet. Sitting on about 4,000 gold. Uh, again, EG can't really go straight high ground without an Aegis and Cheese because a good Chrono can really just win a liquid with the high ground defense fairly easily. As again, they don't have the defensive items to get rid of the global. So global comes out and they can't cast Winter Warren's abilities, they can't cast Size abilities, and they should be able to burst someone in Chronos here as long as they're in position to do so. And Liquid looking to do some of that now as they're going to smoke up as 4 BKB purchased by Mind Control. He's going to buy out for that for go buyback. And he's also put a lot of pressure top so that will force someone from EG to deal with it. And it will be Arteezy. And this is a chance for Liquid to catch EG split up. But they run into Winter Waven. This is not the ideal pickoff but if they can get him without committing too much could be okay. And they will take out Crit. He does have buyback however and actually maybe look to push into top bottom lane a bunch of tree ants down here defending against uh, Zai's split push but I don't think they want to go high ground against EG as they know that most likely crit will have buyback so they're just going to take that pick off and back off pretty sure silencer got the end from that so this will help towards his infinite scaling towards the late game GH does have his completed uh, Shadow Blade now that will allow him to maybe look to go for some pickoffs with the Nature's Prophet TPing in. Let's see his Kuroki's items. He's halfway to his Agnims. That would be a big pickup for Liquid because if they can get a good team fight off and EG gets caught without buyback or incapable of defending their base they can drop those Aghanim Serpent Wards and they do a ton of damage. He did go for the cast range instead of the experience so he won't get a fast level 20 for that plus 4 ward summon but I think it's okay. The cast range is kind of important actually. And we see Liquid run straight into EG. Once again they'll run into Winter Waven but this time around he managed to get the Arctic Burn off and fly away. Uh, they weren't sure where the rest of EG's heroes were, so they didn't want to run straight into them. And they only broke one of the heroes' smoke, though. That was miracles. The rest of the heroes are still smoked up. They get the D board here as well with GH's gem. And maybe they're looking for EG to walk in and check Rosh with somebody, but it doesn't look like they're interested in doing any of that. So. Said they're gonna send mind control to push out the bottom lane here. Uh, Kuroki's telling him to push it all the way in and force a hero to TP. Um, if he can force a hero to TP down bottom, um, if not, he gets a tier two and so win either way. But they're actually gonna go in onto mid. Chronosphere hits onto Arteezy, but only Arteezy. But he gets his BKB off. GH goes in, ends up dying. Echo slams, but. He will buy back immediately, but the buybacks or no, the buybacks are actually coming from EG. EG doesn't have buyback. When Tell Man dies, he does have buyback. But without the Chronosphere, I don't know how he's able to defend. And so they do take out Crit and they take out Universe, but Arteezy and Sumail cleans up. They get a triple kill onto Sumail. Mind control back to split pushing bottom lane. And this will force at least some response out from EG. Of course, the mid rack is already taken. Uh, they can look to take a range, but uh, they don't have tier 2s for Liquid on either lane, so 
they can just head in. As long as there's a creep wave mid, they can take the tier 3 bottom. And oh, they find the lasso onto Miracle. This is a big pickoff. He doesn't have buyback and he will go down dead for 80 seconds. This is looking to be an EG game. However, Fisher locks Sumail in the base. He also gets silenced up, but Cold Embrace will keep him alive. He shoots out the triple arrow. He leaps away. There's the Winter's Curse onto GH, making sure he doesn't get the chain stun. And they get a nice arrow there onto Mind Control or a stun. I'm not sure what that was. And he also was put to sleep. Keep in mind, Mind Control doesn't have buyback. He pops his BKB. He tries to get out. And GH ends up dying. Kuroki dies as well. He does have buyback. Chronosphere not yet up for Metal Man. Still on cooldown for another 10 seconds. And he's going to salve up. This is their last hope of defending this bottom tower. Samael did die and end up buying back for this. And they're going to head straight into Roshan. And Mike Troll will find a kill there onto Zai. Got a lot of gold from that one actually. But now EG heading into the Rosh pit. I don't think Liquid can get in position to defend this. Uh, they don't have a top shrine anymore. And Universe can always break any of their smokes or potential to go in and yeah Roshan will be taken universe gets a D ward as well but tell man playing with fire a little bit there trying to pick up the banner rune universe does have the lasso up and does have ways to cancel the Lincolns as well meantime tell man pushing out the bottom lane EG did use a lot of buybacks actually Samael bought back he does have the Aegis now but keep in mind universe and crit did buy back for the previous fight as well so if they try to push straight high ground and end up Dying, universe or uh, universe Metal Man. If he gets a nice Chrono off, uh, they can win the fight and maybe look to go straight Throne as three heroes will be dead for a long time without buyback. And there's no way that Artz can defend alone with just Zai. And even Zai doesn't have buyback. He just doesn't have the gold for it. He bought out for his BKB. It is a 10 second BKB. So uh, EG looking like they're on a good spot, but again. Going high ground against Liquid lineup is not easy and they have to be careful actually because their heroes don't have buyback. If they want to play it super safe, they'll just wait it out. Uh, six minutes for some males and five, about five minutes for universes, about five minutes for crits as well. But if they do wait that long, they're just going to waste their Aegis timing. So let's see what EG actually will plan for. Again, uh, if they do just go straight high ground, they can either just straight up win the game, but if the fight doesn't go well, if somehow Liquid manage to defend, and this is something they are known for, is defending in these type of scenarios. I can't count the number of times I've seen mind control on a hero like Enigma with huge black holes defending against late game pushes like this. Gonna be really important how they approach this fight. Oh no, that's a triple arrow from Murata. One will hit onto the void. Fortunately, he was facing the other direction, so they had the force staff to move him further back in the base. Otherwise, he could have been lassoed and pulled into EG. And EG deciding to push. They're just going to lead with Arteezy because he does have buyback and he does have the cheese as well. And here they use the chrono onto Arteezy. However, the tall man gets smacked in the face by an arrow. Arteezy turns around with the BKB. And Chrono will be pretty much wasted. Kuroki managed to drop the ward before dying. That's a godlike streak for Arteezy's mail. Has gone in deep now. Echo Slam hits in the back. Will bring Arteezy down low, but he still has the cheese. He will eat it now. And Liquid just don't have what it takes to defend. They take out Samail. He goes down. They get the silence onto him. But Winter's Curse hits onto Madama, man. He's going to go down. Lasso hits onto Mind Control as well. They're all dead. Good game. Well played. Will be called. And EG take game two against Liquid. They will tie out the series 1-1 against this. This is the best of two. So it will remain as a tie. And I'm wrong on all my predictions. GG. So well played there by EG, tying out another series here. That will be the third third tie of the day for them. And that will put them about in a mid spot in the groups. It won't top for them, obviously, but they're doing okay so far. Looking solid in some of their games, but I think in most of the games they lose, it's mostly a drafting issue uh, it's from the games I've seen so far from them. And... They still have a lot of strategies, I'm assuming, in store. So, 
they're looking okay. Uh, EG are not known to start off really hot. Uh, they tend to just do middle of the road and then come back, especially once the main events start. So I'm impressed with the EG's play so far in this game. Um, it's still pretty close. At any time, I feel like Liquid definitely could have come back, but just the play from RTZ was flawless this game. Zero deaths onto him, 10, 0, and 16. So Meow also had a really good game as well. So that's going to be it for this live cast. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you back for some more. Uh, most likely going to be doing more coverage on EG and uh, other teams that I'm a fan of. And so stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed, uh, subscribe for more content like this. I do a lot of live cast and replay commentaries. If this is something you guys enjoy, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. And it's going to be it for now. Peace out. Well played EG. And I hope I see my boys in blue win TI because I have them as my prediction for TI winners. Two-time TI winners, Sumail and Universe. That's going to be the only ones. And it's going to be the first major for RTZ. And... Maybe we'll have a new meme, RTZ TI7. Anyway, see you guys in the next one.